Hello fellow engineers, a happy new year and welcome back to another video on this channel. Today we're doing a review and we are taking a look at the Helios by Severus. And Severus is one of the very few creators who have their very significant own style. I would call it techy and very sci-fi dramatic and realistic at the same time. And one thing I always notice about uh, Severus builds is that he's not trying, like others, like me too, uh, he's not trying to work around the limitations um, from block angles we have in Space Engineers. And he's more trying to integrate them as details. That's how I would try to explain it. And um, yeah, one of the results is the Helios here. And I think one thing we can already confirm is it looks amazing. So let's get into this right after the intro. Now, if we look at this ship and think about if it's inspired by something, I would say maybe a mix of Halo franchise and The Expanse. And to be honest, the best of both universes. And if we take a look into uh, the workshop and uh, look at Severus' site, uh, we will see a lot of very similar designs or design philosophies. And uh, a lot of that looks like um, Halo style stuff and um, industrial. And there's also some some obviously um, Star Citizen inspired stuff uh, like this one here I already showed in another video if I remember right. So yeah, this is Severus uh, workshop page. If you want to take a look at that, it will be linked in the description down below. Now the workshop page of the Helios uh, shows its full name uh, A R D N A U C V S H C R two two seven Helios. Well, dude loves letters, and um, yeah, I would like to know what all this stands for. Maybe someone can tell me. And yeah, there's some lore about it and uh, the basic specs. Um, this year, the PCU count of uh, 56,753 is not correct. We will see this in a minute. And um, yeah, it's vanilla. It's using scripts that are uh, not absolutely necessary to um, yeah use it. And no subgrids. And so basically survivor ready. Now, if we take a look at the actual uh, PCU count of the ship, uh, we will see 23,753. And that's kind of the half of what is uh, noted in uh, the workshop uh, description. And I think that might be because of a repair projector that is somewhere in here. Uh, and when it's active, uh, it's the doubled amount of um, PCU. But besides that, and to satisfy the official server folks, um, yeah, that's a very odd number uh, for playing it on an official server. And because for official servers, we usually want to have 20k of PCU. Now, I'm not on the side of nagging around about that. And I barely dare to criticize such a nice ship for what is necessary. Uh, to make it look like what it is. But in this special case, I can imagine uh, many people want to have it fit into the 20k, to have it on official servers, and it's really close to it. And here are two ways to solve that. Either you share the PCU with another player of your faction, or you can replace a couple of things that have very high PCU costs, and that's some of these suspension parts in here, which are two each quarter of the outer ring here, and another two here, and another two on the other side, and maybe these rotors here. And all these can be replaced with something that is more simple and maybe 
um, a texture like uh, the sci-fi armor. So you still have almost the same grade of detail without changing too much and can you can easily bring it into the 20k PCU limit. But let me correct myself. Actually, I am criticizing something here, but it's not the ship. It's more about some people that are commenting under such ships and complaining exactly about this thing of 20k of PCU limit. And not only that, it's also about all other individual needs some people have, but a ship doesn't fit. And I think these kinds of comments are pretty much pointless and brazen. Because we are playing a game called Space Engineers. So what keeps people from taking the blueprint, loading it into the game and making it fit their needs? But that's just my two cents about complainings of this kind, uh, not about commenting and discussing builds in general. So let's take a quick look around this beautiful ship. And one thing that catches the eye uh, are these really great um, engine housings. And I absolutely appreciate this space design here, which makes it look even more techy. And of course, these orbiting ring-like ornaments around the midsection of the ship. We see like... I think I counted eight artillery turrets that are very well integrated into the ship's design. And I think it's one, two, three, four, five, and six railguns uh, facing forward, which according to another YouTuber is the bare minimum to make it combat ready. Yeah, this is definitely the ship's chocolate side. A little targeting camera at the front. And here we have the entrance, which is on both sides. And for some reason, uh, two connectors on each side. Um, some might complain that these connectors are hard to reach uh, to dock it to a station. But again, this is one thing I see a little different. Because again, the game is called Space Engineers. And if you are the one who's using this build, you are also the one who is creating the counterpart of docking on your station. So why not letting it stick out so it matches this more inset connectors? Also, your ship is the one that is going to battle, not your station. So for which of both does it make more sense to have sensible components a little more inset? Now let's take a look at the interior. And we have an actual safety airlock here. The inside doesn't open before the outside is closed. Inside of here we have a nicely lit up uh, room with a survival kit and some space walk wardrobes. And I think this direction is uh, to the bridge. But before we go there we have another deck down here. And down here we have some crew quarters uh, with beds and toilets and showers. Uh, pretty basic but yeah, for the immersion. Upstairs again. We find the CIC or main bridge here. And I mean, look at this. Isn't that great? I really like these um, dark sci-fi, but maybe submarine style vibes in here with uh, the nebulous atmosphere from uh, the spotlights in the uh, ceiling. Uh, there's a couple of piloting seats. I would say this is for a maximum of six crew members here. Yeah, some turret control blocks. I think they are for detailing uh, there's a script running uh, that is showing the power output, I think, or the power management, uh, the energy management. Um, we have some very well integrated uh, assemblers here. Is it assemblers? Yeah, it's industrial assemblers. Yeah, and that's already all about the interior. 
Not too much, but very nice and immersive design. So now let's check its functionality. And by the way, we have gravity, yeah. We can walk in here. Okay, the basic functions on the toolbar, like um, turning engines on off, uh, camera use, weapons use, the railgun use, uh, jump drive, antenna and beacon. So let's see some acceleration here, which well is pretty good for a ship of this size. And there we are at 100 meters per second. And the braking, stop speed. Well, takes a little longer, but still decent. And some sidewall thrust. Well, pretty sure that is enough for maneuvering. Up. Down. Well, I think it doesn't have enough upward thrust to uh, start in horizontal position from planets. Um, but maybe the expand style uh, with the nose upwards, it might work. One more thing I would like to see here is the hydrogen capacity, since it has a lot of hydrogen engines. And we have four large tanks plus another like 10 or 9. Yeah, it looks like it's 10 hydrogen tanks. Well, I think that uh, is decent. Now at this point, most other reviewers would just crash the ship into something, but I will do it a little different. Since I would see this ship as meant to be to have something nice looking in mostly PvE survival, I will just put it into a broadside position to a similar sized ship and see how long it can stand that. Well, so far about the Helios and if you like this ship, have a look into the workshop and leave a thumb for Severus really nice looking work here. And I also hope you liked this video, so don't forget to subscribe and give a comment and a like for the algorithm. Now thanks for watching, see you next time, bye.